Michigan Football Report is presented by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com, use promo code GOBLUE for 20% off and free shipping. It's the easiest gift for this holiday season. Give to a friend who might be in need. Uh, if they need to trim up down below or send the link, the promo code to anyone who asks you what you want for a Christmas present this holiday season. All right, we have got your questions coming in from YouTube, from our Facebook page as well. We're going to answer a ton of them and have some really good ones come in. Before we do, it worked for Nebraska, it worked for Wisconsin, so it's going to work for Penn State. Road games depend on us all coming together, good karma, like the video, and Michigan will be Penn State. It's just as simple as that, okay? So if you'd like it to be Penn State, you got to like this video. I've said it before, if you watched our videos prior to Wisconsin, prior to Nebraska, I would have said, don't be the guy sitting there Saturday afternoon saying, you know what, I didn't like that video because that Yoder guy is just a smug asshole, I didn't want to do it but they lost and it's my fault because that's what's going to happen. So if you want to win, just like the video, all right? It's as simple as that. Don't be a jerk. Make sure Michigan wins. Put out good karma in the world, all right? We're all on the same team here, right here. Go blue, like the video. First question, Facebook page, Jacob Miller. Is this a successful season if and only if Michigan wins out? I'm not going to include the bowl game in this consideration. We're talking the three games that are on the schedule here. Toss them up on screen, producer Marshall. We got Penn State coming up this weekend, 12 o'clock on ABC. Next week, it's Maryland, like two games in the road, 3.30 on the Big Ten Network. <sighs> Who's going to watch that? And then, of course, November 27th, Ohio State on Fox at the Big House. And I don't know. I actually don't think so, Jacob. Um, I think there's two things that need to happen for this to be considered a successful season for me. You win at Penn State. What that does is that it's just that the same narrative of same old Harbaugh can beat up on the little guys, but when it comes to you know a road game against anybody of, of uh, I guess, any talent at all or equal talent as Michigan, and of course uh, any big games against Ohio State, et cetera, bowl games, he just can't get it done. That's the narrative on Jim Harbaugh. So you knock down, you already got, got Wisconsin, right? You got a little bit with Nebraska, a big road win in a tough environment. Didn't get it done at Michigan State, Okay. So you can't have that narrative be what's on people's mind going into the end of the season. So you do that, check. Just don't get crushed by Ohio State. I don't think you have to win to make it a successful season based on expectations. Most people had this is a 6-6, six and six, a 7-4, and four, and the Optimus 8-4 and four season. There was no one, no one on the, in the entire universe. If you can find it, you send it to me. I'll bring you on as my guest host for a show later this week. If you can find me one person verified, put out in August, then Michigan will go 10 and 2 or better. Uh, yeah, you're, uh, you're my new co host for a show next week, okay? So tweet it at me, put it in the comments, whatever it is. I need a link, it needs to be verified. So going 10 and 2, beating Penn State, losing to Ohio State, I'm calling that a successful season, but that's just me. All right, are you guys going one home game left of the year? Um, it's an interesting one because. Uh, I have gone to every Michigan-Ohio State game in Ann Arbor uh, since 1995 except for one game, right? It was a 2017 game because uh, I just moved that weekend, right, the prior week. And so, um, you know, like a one-year-old kid, you know how that goes. So I don't think I'm going to go. Um, talking to my sister the other day, and she's like, you, you're going, blah, 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 blah. I was talking to Dan. I don't think I'm going, right? Last year uh, with Corona and staying home, you know, just the whole thing. I used to go to, you know, most seasons I'm going to three, four, five Michigan games, living in Texas, flying up there, that Friday night flight, landing at 11 o'clock. It's a whole ordeal. And with a five-year-old son now, et cetera, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to go. So we know from you guys, should I go? Uh, but more importantly, are you going? Give me a Y or an N. If you are going, hell, maybe you can convince me to go. Like, James, uh, the booze is on me and, uh, you know, lap dances are on me afterwards the Michigan wins. Like, if you're offering that, let me know. I might make the trip if I have that kind of uh, incentives coming up to Ann Arbor. All right. Free Thinker says, let's go, Brandon. Show Ashley Biden's diary. I I'm not really sure what this one was. It was one of the, uh, the top comments of, uh, of our you know, YouTube mailbag call from yesterday. But looked up on Michigan's football roster. As of today, uh, you know, uh, November 10th, 2021. No Brandons on Michigan roster. So I also looked at Penn State's. Couldn't find any Brandons that uh, were co contributors. So I'm not sure what this is in reference to. Potentially, he thought it was in a different channel. But uh, let's go, Brandon. I don't know what that's for, but uh, I guess Free Thinker is really. Maybe it's his son or something like that. He just told him to give his son a shout out. But uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I don't even know about the Ashley Biden's diary. So I, I think this guy just actually clicked on the wrong link and he just started typing stuff. But uh, Free Thinker, thank you so much for watching. Uh, 
Let's go, Brandon. I don't know. I don't know what that means. All right. Uh, Elliot Jones, what are the ways we can be successful in the red zone more often? And I have been a hater of Josh Gaddis on Twitter, on this show, saying that he has no clue what to do in the red zone. Okay, He has absolutely no idea what he's doing when Michigan gets the ball inside the 20-yard line. Either they need to uh, just slam a running back into the line and hope that they break a tackle and get to the end zone, or it has to be more than 20-yard touchdown. So here is my foolproof red zone plan for this team. I wanna, I'm not just going to be a guy who's talking trash out there with no plan, so here's the plan. Okay, Stop the fade passes to the tiny wide receivers. Mike Sainerstall is never going to beat out a cornerback for a jump ball pass in the back corner of the end zone. So just stop doing it, okay? We do that, cool. Remember screen passes? I remember screen passes. They work, right? And then they work in the red zone. Michigan used to do them all the time with Lloyd Carr as their head coach. You do a little screen pass, two linemen go out there, boom. Mike Hart walks into the end zone. Chris Perry walks in the end zone. Michigan just doesn't run screen pass anymore. Tight end seam routes, okay? You got Schoonmaker. You've got Eric Alf. He returns this week. They're 6'4", six, 6'5", six, guys. Just have them fake block, release straight up the, the da- hash marks, and hit them, okay? If there's a safety who comes over the top, maybe you don't pass to him, but at least give him the opportunity if he's going against a linebacker or uh, maybe, hell, sometimes even a defensive end that's playing off the line. Tight end seam routes, I don't see Michigan ever running them in the red zone. Weak side QB waggle to the tight end. They finally did it this past week. Luke Schoonmaker got in the end zone twice. Ding, ding, ding. Why don't we do it every game? I don't know. But last but not least, I'm not a football coach, so here's the, here's the solution. Josh Gaddis, go watch Ohio State, Oklahoma. Actually, they, they're actually pretty bad in the, in the red zone. Go watch Alabama or Oklahoma or a team that, you know, look at the red zone stats, who puts the ball in the end zone the most, and just run the same plays as them, right? Whatever plays they run, run those plays, and you start scoring more touchdowns. Michigan's efficiency in the red zone is absolutely abysmal, and, uh, and I've got some stats that we'll go to here later in the show, but uh, that is my red zone plan. You do this, national champions. All right, Brandon, Brendan Murphy coming in. What should Michigan's cons- main concerns be going into the Penn State game? And there are quite a few, right? Uh, for a team that's lost three games, this Penn State team uh, really is the uh, could, could potentially be in the top 10 or so. They could have won at Iowa. Uh, I don't know what the hell happened in that nine overtime game against Illinois. And they played Ohio State tough, but didn't get the, the, the job done. But they have a wide receiver, Dotson, right? Jahan, Jahan, people pronounce it multiple times. He is a monster, right? He's overlooked by Ohio State's wide receivers. He's overlooked by Michigan State's wide receivers and some others around the conference. Purdue's got a star wide receiver. But his stats are pretty damn impressive. And he is turning out one of the better seasons we've seen from a Big Ten wide receiver in a while. 71 catches already. He's on pace for 90-ish catches, maybe 95 if they go to a bowl game. Obviously, Michigan's going to try and stop that, uh, that trend. 932 yards already. Nine touchdowns, averaging 104 yards per game. Check out the stats he had this past week versus Maryland. All right, 11 catches, 242 yards, 22 yards per catch on 11 catches. It's pretty good. Three touchdowns. So Michigan's been burned in the last couple of years on these big-time wide receivers uh, who've just racked up big numbers. Happened last year, Michigan State's wide receivers, Indiana's wide receivers. Luckily for Michigan, they were able to, you know, Put, put a stop to that this year. Those same, some of those same players didn't have the same impact. So Michigan has got to come up with a solution for Dotson. You stop Dotson. You win the game. It's as simple as that. Hopefully, right? If he is, if he gets five touchdowns like Kenneth Walker did, if he absolutely goes off when you know this is the only weapon that they have that can do serious damage against you, and you still let him go off, then you've got a big problem. Mike McDonald might be a little bit uh, uh, overrated if he lets him go off for 175 and two touchdowns or something like that. So definitely have to stop him. Penn State's defense is great, right? They're one of the best defenses in the country, but I do think Michigan will be able to score enough points to win. As long as they can stop Dotson, don't let him go for 175 and two touchdowns. We told you about Manscaped at the top of the show. They are bringing it this holiday season. You don't want to wake up on Christmas Day, you know, maybe have a little thing before the kids come down and the wife goes down and it's just a jungle down there. So you're going to get hooked up with Manscaped. You go out to the stocking stuffer, grab your new lawnmower 4.0 right there on the screen, trim up. You have happy wife, happy life. So tell her to go to manscaped.com, put it in the stocking, and uh, you guys will have a holiday season uh, to remember, at least, from our friends at Manscaped. Manscaped.com, promo code GOBLUE. I love the lawnmower 4.0. Have her also check out the perfect package if you just want everything looking, feeling, smelling good. They got some ball fragrance. It's quite the ordeal that you get down with Manscaped with the perfect package. Tell your wife, hook me up. 
hook yourself up. Manscaped.com, promo code GOBLUE. Michigan, Penn State, 12 o'clock on Saturday. It's a pick 'em. Over under is 48 and a half. So, um, if this game was in Ann Arbor, Michigan would be favored by six or seven points since it's, uh, they're on the road. It's a pick 'em. So, neutral field, Michigan would be a three to four point favorite. I want you guys, though, to go down in the comment. Got a ton of you predicting yesterday, not as many as I expected. So, Go down in the comments, predict the score of this game. I want to see how you guys are feeling about this. I think it's the third most important game of the year, in my opinion. You win this one, you're feeling really good. You're going into Ohio State, probably ranked in the top five or six in the country in a game that we'll all remember for years, hopefully in a good way or at least a competitive way. But 2006, 1997, uh, 2002, 2016, 2018, those games are both teams are ranked right there. The winner potentially can go to the college football playoff, national championship game, all that good stuff. NAR question, should Gaddis be fired? Well, I think so. I mean, he's not running the offense that he came, was hired to, to, to run at Michigan. There's not a single person alive who's ever watched football that would say, watch this team play for a few games, then describe it in three words. There's zero people that would go, Speed in space. No one would say that. They'd say like, ah, kind of like ball control football, something like that. How about this stat for you? Jake Moody with 23 field goal attempts so far this year has the most field goal attempts so far in the Power Five. As a player or two from the smaller conferences, group of five, they have more attempts of him. And he's probably going to be first team All-American, 21 of 23 so far this year, most in the Power Five, most in the Big Ten. But look at this stat here. In the last four games, Michigan has been in the red zone 25 times and they only have 11 touchdowns, 44% on the year. In Big Ten play, which is a couple more games than that than the four, I just want to highlight those four, but in Big Ten play, Michigan is an eighth in the conference in red zone trips that result in touchdowns. So Josh Gass, I don't frankly think, is doing what he was hired to do, which is bring a Oklahoma, Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State-style offense to Michigan. It has not happened. We're running the same offense that Jim Harbaugh Grant at Stanford, so why are you paying Josh Gass $1.1 million? I don't think he will be retained, and uh, I'm guessing that move will be made within a matter of days after the Ohio State game, maybe after the bowl game. We'll see. J Money Sniper, I think MSU won because they played with up-tempo, and I don't need to read the rest of it. It's very clear that they were able to exploit something that Michigan wasn't expecting, which is up-tempo play getting a play call in there on fourth down, converting it, and getting right back on the ball and calling another play. So they went into these fourth down plays with two play calls. Hey, we got the really good play call. If we convert, don't give Michigan any time to react or sub guys in there. Get your asses up to the ball. Snap it as fast as you can. Let's run that second play. Both fourth downs they had that they converted in that game uh, you know, nine, ten days ago, both fourth downs, the next play resulted in a touchdown because they ran up the line and snapped it as soon as the ref let them. Ohio State will exploit that all day. Hell, Maryland might exploit it all day too, so Michigan needs to keep uh, an eye out for that and certainly needs to come up with a plan that, uh, that can account for it. Now, uh, Mike McDonald's been with the Baltimore Ravens. Plenty of teams in the NFL play hurry up these days. He should not be surprised by that at all, but needs to be more prepared going into that one. KJ, percentage that Harbaugh is back next season. Oh, yeah. Fire Harbaugh. Maybe I, I put emphasis on, oh, oh, yeah. I think it might have just been like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Fire Harbaugh. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know if he can get fired at this point if you win two of the last three games. All right? uh, if you lose by 60 to Ohio State, and their fans certainly think that, uh, that, that they can beat Michigan that bad, and, and oh, Ryan Day has got revenge on his mind from last year that Michigan canceled the game and all that different stuff. But I don't think C.J. Stroud is the kind of quarterback like Justin Fields that he's going to put up 60-odd uh, points, or certainly not even Dwayne Haskins. So I think Michigan will be competitive in the game. As of now, I do not have them winning the game, but I don't think Ohio State's going to score 60 points or 50 points. I would put it more at like a 38 to 21 kind of game at this point. Two to three scores they'd win. And I would say it's acceptable. But that means there's a lot of pressure going on to Harbaugh next year. But I'll ask you guys this question to wrap up today's show. Go in the comments and give me your one word to describe Jim Harbaugh's seven seasons at Michigan. Um, eh, I don't know what the, what the answer is. I'm going to go with underwhelming. But uh, coming off of last year's disaster season, I wouldn't call it uh, fireable. At least of now, got to be competitive with Ohio State. Got to beat Ohio State coming up, or Penn State coming up this Saturday. I said at the top of the show, said yesterday's show, we're almost 16,000, like a couple subscribers away. Mandates are coming in. Subscriber mandates are coming in. We've got over 100 viewers per show. Well over 100 viewers, obviously. We're in the tens of thousands, some shows, 8,000, 9,000. So coming up soon, you're going to have to subscribe to watch. The subscriber mandate is upon us.
youtube.com slash Michigan TV.